Uh, greetings, comrades. Uh, how are you, wherever you are? We promised that uh, we will do this at least once a week so that uh, we discuss issues of interest. Uh, my voice is a bit hoarse. I'm recovering from a flu. I was able to eat all those garlic and uh, those things. So I'm recovering from flu. So my voice is a bit hoarse. Otherwise, comrades, I hope you are doing great. Uh, we are approaching a long weekend for those that are in South Africa. Uh, because on Monday, it's a human rights day. Uh, it was known as a Sharpville day. <coughs> For those, for those who didn't know, you remember that um, uh, there was a demonstration around the carrying of uh, IDs as demanded by the apartheid regime. So there was a boycott that led to many people being killed in what was called Sheffield Day. But uh, uh, after 1994, the name of the holiday was changed to Human Rights Day. So talking about Roman Rights Day, <clears throat> there was a demonstration or a march that was planned on Monday uh, from uh, Parktown in Johannesburg to CPT by South African organizations around um, xenophobia. It's an anti-xenophobic march uh, uh, I've seen in a number of platforms. The perception was that it was organized by migrants. This is not the case. The migrants only joined uh, uh, in support of the march because the march is in solidarity with the migrants who have been targeted. Migrants cannot give solidarity to themselves, so, so you'll understand. But because there have been threats, as we understand, from uh, Operation Tutula and others, so the Johannesburg Metro has decided not to grant permission to those that had requested to take part uh, in the march on, the, on Monday, the 21st of March, 2022. So that march is no longer going to happen. We are, of course, worried about uh, what is happening in Zimbabwe. You know, there's a by-election coming up on the 26th of March. Uh, we are seeing violence uh, taking place in Zimbabwe. Uh, we saw uh, one guy who was beaten up and were told was beaten up because uh, he was wearing uh, his yellow party regalia. Uh, we know that yellow is now associated with the triple C, uh, which is led by Chamisa. So we condemn such acts. Because the Constitution of Zimbabwe provides for anyone uh, 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 who wants to associate to associate. Uh, so every person has a right to join a political organization of their choice. Uh, we are also worried that uh, on the other evening we received a message this week that in Umzimwane district, which is my home district, uh, what, 20, what 20 for those who do not know <clears throat> it's around Mbalabala. Uh, I know those, if you are driving from Kwanda towards Bulawayo, you will pass through a place called Mbalabala. Uh, it was called Palabala during the old days. It has a military uh, camp uh, there, a military camp. But in the area where this happened, you know that in 1985, people were settled in those farms in and around Mbalabala. Uh, so the farming community uh, and, and uh, the resettlement, uh, ZANU-PF over the years has been using intimidation uh, to seal off those areas to an extent that the opposition will find it difficult to get in. So uh, this week uh, they targeted a candidate for Triple C, a female candidate. They sealed off her home, intimidating her because uh, they cannot stomach that uh, she has the guts to stand as a council candidate. We condemn that kind of violence. Uh, and uh, we are calling on the police to arrest anyone that is responsible and uh, call on the Zimbabwean government to ensure that uh, political parties 
mass campaign uh, uh, peacefully. Uh, we should not have a situation whereby some political parties are denied the right to campaign. But of course, uh, 26 March uh, is an interesting uh, date uh, as a, a number of political parties will be contesting across the country. Uh, what is emerging though based on the cam ongoing campaign uh, is that uh, Zimbabwe remains a two-party system that is ZANU-PF and now Triple C. It used to be MTC but now Triple C. Uh, it appears for now that uh, there's no third way. I know when I talk of a third way, uh, uh, some uh, would say there is a third way that they are still building, but uh, well, with the ability in the third way, we will not want to dispute that and we are not getting into that discussion. But the reality of the matter is that it is a two-party system. Either you support the ZANU-PF or you support, uh, <coughs> uh, you support the Triple C. Uh, 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 then other parties uh, will find it difficult to win a ward and uh, a seat in the 26 by elections. Uh, this, of course, is going to play itself out in the 2023 20, elections. We do not expect that uh, other parties will win uh, any ward or any seat. This, of course, in the case of Matebeleland, brings uh, 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 what one might call uh, 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 some serious debate, uh, uh, particularly on the question of restoration. We have always said that... Uh, while we would not want to discuss restoration, we have always said that uh, the majority of the people in Matebeleland uh, 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 do not support the restoration agenda. They are split between the two main parties. We have many people in Matebeleland who support ZANU-PF, just as we have many people in Matebeleland who support uh, Triple C. I, 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 know, I know my comrades from... <coughs> MRP will say the 2018 elections were rigged and that the 2023 elections are going to be rigged. But the reality of the matter is that uh, the people of Matebele land, just as, as, as people from other provinces, are split between the two parties. Uh, which cement the view which, which uh, we shared that uh, 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 the regional question, as it were, is not different from the national question. Or if we uh, were to put it uh, into context, uh, 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 you cannot divorce <coughs> what is happening in the region uh, uh, from what is happening nationally. So you cannot resolve the problems in Matebelen region without resolving uh, 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 the national question. So you can only resolve the regional question by firstly resolving the national question. Unjani, uh, Comrade Wiseman Mbutum, it's good to see you here and, and the other comrades. Like I said, comrades, I'm just recovering from flu, so my voice is a bit hoaxy. But, but uh, we think that uh, you will have a great weekend. So let us continue to engage on uh, various issues. We also see what, what is happening in Ukraine. Uh, uh, again, uh, uh, comrades are divided. There are some uh, who see uh, 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 Russia as an aggressor uh, in Ukraine, uh, and others are condemning us as communists to say, why support uh, uh, President Putin, a uh, uh, capitalist? We don't dispute the fact that uh, President Putin is not a communist. Uh, the communist is uh, not in power in Russia. The communist part of the Russian Federation is not in power. So President Putin and the government that he leads is not a communist. Uh, but we stand with the people of Russia and the government uh, for, because uh, they are standing up against the NATO expansion in Eastern Europe. You know, we are opposed to NATO, we are opposed to imperialism. We have defined ours as a strike against imperialism and the looting class. So uh, when uh, President Putin took the action that he took, together with his government, yes, we support him. We have been speaking to our comrades in the 
a communist part of the Russian Federation, they support what uh, the government of Russia is doing in Ukraine. It is a, a military operation. Of course, none of us will celebrate the death of any individual, will not celebrate that, and uh, we certainly would uh, have, have hoped that uh, there, was, uh, there was not going to be a military operation by Russian forces inside Ukraine. But uh, the situation demanded that uh, they, they needed to be an operation, military operation, to dismantle the NATO military bases that are inside Ukraine. Uh, uh, the other thing which comrades might not be speaking to, uh, those that uh, support uh, uh, Ukraine or are anti what uh, Russia is doing, uh, 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 is that uh, <clears throat> there's been an ongoing genocide in the, uh, uh, we're spoken about in the Donbass region in Ukraine by the Russian government since uh, 2014. And uh, the Western media doesn't speak to this and the many other comrades that don't speak to this. Uh, uh, so we oppose that genocide. Uh, uh, and uh, we oppose uh, Ukraine joining NATO. While, while Ukraine is an independent and a sovereign state, but uh, its sovereignty should not uh, uh, put the Russia uh, under security threat by allowing NATO and others uh, to set up military bases inside uh, Ukraine. Uh, uh, so th thanks comrades a lot, thanks comrades a lot. We will con continue to engage, but we wish all the candidates in the uh, 26th by election all the best. Uh, 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 may those that will win uh, proceed to implement their manifestos of implement what they pro promised uh, the electorate and uh, those that will have lost uh, 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 it will mean they have to go back to the drawing board and uh, do better in 2023. Otherwise, comrades, have a great weekend. Goodbye.